we still gotta see. I I wouldn't be surprised if we see. No. Okay. Well, everything. Uh, I'm I'm sad inside. Oh, okay. So this is gonna actually. I'm. I feel like this is gonna be a fun matchup, regardless. And maybe we will see the little Mac at some point. But for the meantime, it is going to be the Pythra versus Kirby. Now, I feel is... like I feel like Dijon picked uh, Kirby as like, oh yeah, I get to ledge camp Little Mac, and then Zeke said, "Jokes on you, I'm playing, I'm playing a top tier." <laughs> yeah. Although ooh, Kirby is a character that, in the Wi-Fi setting, having like oh tiny little normals, you see how much damage, uh, just the openings it can create, right there, ninety-two percent. That photon edge, I like grabbing the ledge with it. Higher is in the driver's seat now. Those moves are so, so strong. And it, oh, if you're not careful, you can just die from that upbeat. But nonetheless, two of them are now back to neutral, trying to just approaches him with the with the blazing edge. But yeah. oh, All right, this, was that it's F I believe. Yeah, that was <laughs> the classic F tilt, and Pyra just has a whole ton of moves that are just kind of generically really good, generically really strong, kind of difficult to screw up sword normals, and that's kind of what Pyra has in, on, in combination with her ability to maintain stage control. Like, it's a huge danger for the already sluggish Kirby. Granted, Kirby does have the ability to play a little bit more grounded thanks to his crouch as he ends up catching that backer on the jump read. Uh, playing grounded is very much important against uh, against both of these characters. You're really going to try and keep them off their spot and always have access to your full defensive repertoire. But it can just be so hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing about, and we've seen already, um, is Kirby trying to put uh, his opponent off stage because off stage the character they have all right recovery but definitely especially a character like kirby can edge guard but you need to put him off stage first and right now comfortably on the stage throwing out all of these pyra aerials all of these moves that should be at the upbeat beating him out and we've seen how absolutely devastating that move can be nice pick up right there catching the miss tech finally getting a bit of a reversal but does have, so far has not really been able to exploit being in the uh getting this pirate in the corner yeah i will say that zika feels like he's been cutting uh, his combos a little bit short uh like just a simple three piece a couple a couple two piece combos like not really trying to do uh to overextend it all which granted kirby can be a little bit troublesome once he gets his combo game going. Edge guard? Oh, he missed. That's a uh, that's very unfortunate because letting Zeke get back to stage using some of these big aerials, these big moves to keep uh, to keep center all to themselves. Like that's gonna be that's gonna be hard to overcome, especially on ledge like this. Oh, a beautiful tech right there off of the up e from Kirby. He's on Mark though has been done by so much ever since. Finally cleans up the stock right there, but still 86% and not even swapping off of Pyra, understanding that it, the moves that this character has are just so, so powerful. But the weakness of that, Pyra kind of being smaller and I think a little bit heavier, meaning the Kirby combos at least seem to work really well right there. 55%. Oh, this is still definitely, definitely a lead for Zeke Reds, but at the same time, Dijon Mark um, feels like he's starting to... Oh my god, the side B right there. I know that move has armor, but I guess the armor didn't quite have frames right there. And so now 114% definitely on death's door at this point, but another grab, putting him off stage, looking for that last kill, but slows it down just a little bit. Trying to god, find it, going deep off stage. The Blayo, the neutral B, that huge long lasting hitbox. And I don't think he was ever going to be able to peck that. We can check the replay, but I'm pretty sure we'd be seeing red sparks if we inspect it closely. Yeah, that was that was such a well played final uh, final stock from Dijon. But this this decision right here, as yeah, we can confirm. Yeah, those big old red sparks. 
There we go. Big, <laughs> you big, big red sparks here. <laughs> um, I'm actually ashamed I didn't see that without the replay. Yeah, it's. <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you, Mister Mister Three Thousand. We appreciate it. <laughs> but he was playing this stock so well. Like, if we can even back up a little bit further, like just the the dash dancing, the the short hop aerials, the. The way he played on the ground, the way that he fished for grabs was so, like, if there was a way to approach a matchup like, where you feel like you're going to get outboxed and outranged so many times, like, that's the way to go about it. Make them overcommit, make them try to look for, like, overzealous kill moves, but just yeah. a little bit too greedy on that down air and that's yeah. gonna one mistake at 110 that's that's all it's gonna And take. that can be like the ultimate when you're making the comeback when you're like oh my god I'm starting to get inside my opponent's head and you start to you know they're starting to panic and you're like now I'm gonna push it now I'm gonna stop being that sort of patience and go all in and sometimes it's not just not the right time to go all in it's and right a gamble there, going deep for that edge guard <laughs> Yeah, but at the same time, he did feel like he had a decent grasp of what he needed to be doing. Granted, Kirby can really struggle to kill, so going deep off stage like that when you might not have other, you know, like, if he didn't do that, it might require, like, getting an up throw kill at very late, considering the fact that if the opponent plays around it well, Kirby really can struggle to kill. Okay, good DI gonna be getting out of uh, the range of the down air follow up from the forward throw. And we're moving into game two. These two, oh, I like this. This is actually sort of like how that last stock of the last game was playing out. Both of them being much more patient, but we do see the Mithra the, and the speed that that character has available. So far though, it seems that uh, Dijon and Mark has been playing around the Mithra pretty effectively. They're just barely outspacing the hitbox on the final cutter. Oh, and the switch to Pyra, probably looking for an air dodge or something like that, but smart from Dijon Mark not to give it to him. Now, both of these players in the red trying to figure out exactly how they might engineer a kill at this point. God, it's at the mid percents where Zeke really kind of shows off like how good they can be with these characters, how good these characters can be and how good they can be with these characters. But at high percents like this, committing to one character, like it's... It's okay to keep swapping, and Dijon really kind of uh, overcommitting with that back air very high up, but it worked like a charm to even at, even up that game, and now the floodgates are really open with that solid starter. Solid on Zeke to jump away, but he's still up in the vortex. Oh, such a smart way to punish that uh, the photon edge right there. And for the most part, Dijon Mark has at least the second stock here, maybe figured out what he needs to be doing a little better. Oh, but just as I say that, takes another huge chunk of damage from that blazing edge. Oh, it takes a boot to the face to the face for his troubles. These ledge traps have been like they're both players are starting to empty out some of their uh, some of their quick reads, but the prominence revolt comes in. Like I guess he was expecting an offensive option, but the hitbox is so big that it did not matter. And an unfortunate grab there too. Uh, Okay, at this point, Dijon Mark, you have to start thinking about how you're going to get this kill. But it seems that Deke Reds is staying the Pyra, weighs a little bit more. And also, I think that, generally speaking, the Pyra, not only is that been where all the, most of these kills are coming in, but the damage output from this red-haired Fury has absolutely... Honestly, that's what's been carrying him so far, possibly to a victory here. This might be Dijon Mark's uh, winner's stock at 99% and yeah he's staying the pirate knowing that just one more good move could absolutely do him in and okay gonna be punishing that recovery on stage mopping back to Mithra back to Pyra oh I like the idea of trying to mix it up we've seen already that Dijon Mark likes to go off stage so maybe those switches will disincentivize him from doing that but this is also looking so much that game one Oh, but he doesn't quite finish it. That up smash so big, but not quite it. And at this point, I think that's going to be it. Yeah, 
the up B right there. It just has a such a big hitbox, both on the way up and on the way down. We had the kill screen with that Kirby up smash, but it wasn't actually enough to do the deed. And so that's going to be uh, Zeke Reds uh, moving on into the winner's bracket. Yeah, this Flame Nova, because previously, right here, right here, right? This move... Here, let me back up. I'll just like a couple frames. This, this move, this ridiculous move right here, it is so safe. So try, switching up from landing with Nair and starting to land with Flame Nova, not only does it end super quickly and not have a ton of uh, uh, frames afterward, but with... Uh, with how Dijon wanted to play around it by shielding, there was no punish that he could get out of shield. Because the up B... Oh, he... Yeah, and the hurt shift. Yeah, the hurt, on top of the hurt box shifting, he didn't jump out of shield. He dropped shielded and then jumped. So only makes it Is worse it, for wear. Do my, do my eyes deceive me or did he drift a little backwards with that neutral air? Uh, he certainly may have. Let us find out. Here. It might have also are been pushed back technology. here, but... He did. Yeah, he yeah, jumped back. back. I'm not quite sure what the purpose of that drift back would have been. Maybe uh, he was he... trying to read, like, a roll behind and hoping for a late nair into fumbles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you... A common habit between players at pretty much all levels is... Like, landing move that's obviously, like, relatively safe. Like, you're not going to get grabbed or anything. You're not going to, like, most... It's safe against most counter hits. Uh, they go into a defensive option. And roll being very common at, uh, at mid-levels, especially. Like, all right, let me try and cover roll and keep to my ground game. Because that's what Dijon was doing. He was trying to catch land into the up smash. He was trying to block attacks and then uh, go for shield grabs. But... Zeke just kind of doing what <laughs> what Pyra and Mithra are known for doing quite a bit, which is uh, just offensive oppression, yeah. covering one move, one attack with just another attack. And I think I think it was actually really smart to.